Amen. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Let me say that one more time. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Oh, that sounded pretty good to me. So can I just say it one more time for myself? This is a day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord just one more time. Since we've had this COVID virus, that give a whole new meaning to that scripture, don't it? Just let me in the house of the Lord. Let me just in the house one more time. Amen. I am not the main course. I'm just a little Scooby stack. But I come to you today to give you this five minute word. I'm going to be as quick as I can be if the Holy Spirit allows me to be. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning is going to come from Romans 10 and verse number 9. Amen. Amen. And it reads that if thou shalt Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, and doing of his holy, wonderful, and his magnificent word. If I had to put a title on this short message this morning, my title would be, It's Not Complicated. It, it, it's not complicated. I, I think a lot of times we as Christians, as a matter of fact, I have had the opportunity in the last few months to have some deep and in, in-depth uh, in discussions on salvation, right. on justification, on salvation, on what it means to be saved. And I think a lot of times we make this as Christians, we make this this Christian journey too hard, too complicated, and it, it's really not that complicated. As a matter of fact, God gives us just two simple suggestions, two simple things that makes you saved. And I'm going to go through them real quick because I don't have a lot of time. But the first thing that God says is that if thou shalt confess, that word confess means to proclaim, or it, it means to to say out loud, it means to speak boldly of. If thou will confess, if thou will confess, let me tell you, when, when, when we confess with our mouths, we say that we are not ashamed. We cannot be ashamed to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have to confess with our mouth openly. Somebody ought to know that you are Christian. Somebody ought to see the Jesus in you and realize that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Somebody need to know that you believe in what you believe in, that you are not ashamed to let the world know that I am saved, sanctified, and I am filled with God, Holy Spirit, and I don't care what you got to say about it because I am a child of God. And born again, you ought to confess with your mouth that when your money was strange and you didn't know where your next meal was going to come from, you ought to confess that, that God was the one that provided every good and perfect gift. Somebody ought to confess that God is God and he knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you are going through. Somebody ought to confess Believe 
Thank in you. In thy heart. Mm -hmm. And believe in thy heart. Look here. When I was a kid, we used to have this, this saying, and the saying was, you can make your mouth say anything. It's not enough that you confess the Lord Jesus. You have to believe in your heart that he is who he says he is. You got to believe deep down inside of you with everything you got that you ought to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, yes, Lord. that he died on the cross yes, for Lord. your sins, yes, that he is seated at the right yes, hand of the Father. Yes, you got to believe yes. deep down in your heart yes. that one day he's coming back for a church, a church without spot or blemish. You got to believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead. You got to believe because God Jesus from the dead, he will raise you from the dead. You gotta believe deep down in your heart with everything you got, with all that's inside of you. You gotta believe that God has done what God said he would do. Amen. Now, now, I want y'all to notice something, 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 Amen. okay? The Bible don't say, the Bible don't say that if you believe in your heart, God will raise Jesus from the dead. It don't say that. It don't say he will. It don't say that if you believe in your heart, God might raise Jesus from the dead. It, it don't say that either. It don't say that it's a possibility that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus. It don't say that. What the Bible says is that Come on, bless you. If you believe in your heart that God has, has, has passed him, it's already done. Amen. So you ain't got to worry about will God do what God said he would do. The work is already done. Jesus has already died for your sins. Jesus has already paid the price that you could not pay. One that you owe. One that he did not owe. But he has done it already. The Bible says, if you confess with your heart yeah. the Lord Jesus yeah. and believe in your heart Amen. that God raised him from the dead, you got a prize coming. Amen. You got Amen. something to look forward to. Right, right. You got something that not everybody is going to say that they're able to have. Let's see what it says. It says, that if you believe, if you confess with your mouth and the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart, God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Thou shalt be saved. Now that word saved, it, 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 it gives to two things. Okay, it, it, it led my mind in two different ways. The first way was if I got to be saved, that means I'm in trouble. Yeah. I, I, I've never known of anybody who had to be saved that wasn't in trouble. All right. Talk to me. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm, not, I'm not doing a good job. There was a problem that I had that I couldn't get away from that I needed help with. Okay, let me try this. I was on my way to a devil's hell. Didn't have any way to stop it. Didn't have any other place to go. That's where I was headed. So I needed a savior. I was in trouble. I needed a savior. But the Bible also says, what well, the second part of saved is, is not only did I need a savior, but hallelujah, thank God, God gave me one. Hallelujah, God gave me a savior. All right, I, I know I'm not doing that good. I only got a few minutes left. Let me, let me see, let me see, let me think. I was on my way to a devil's hell. That's not a good place. I didn't have any way 
to stop myself from going to a devil's hell. But my God sent his son to die on the cross for my sins and quite frankly for yours too in case you didn't know. So here's what I'm trying to get you to understand. This is what I want to say. I said all that to say this. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. When you were on your way to a devil's hell, when you, and the bad thing about it is for me, because I'm kind of good looking, and the bad thing about it is I didn't look good enough to get to heaven. I wasn't rich enough to get to heaven. I didn't, I didn't do everything that I should have done to earn my way to heaven. I couldn't get there on my own. I was on my way. I was in trouble. But I want you to know one thing this morning. That Jesus loved me so much. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him. And you want to know what? I'm a part of that whosoever. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. I want you to know this morning, Prospect Hill, I step by to tell you this morning, I am saved. Thank you, God. I am filled with God, Holy Spirit. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He rose on the cross.